Hello, hello, my precious friends. So glad to be with you once again. This is Archbishop Ken McNatt from Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm going to be sharing with you in just a moment some principles that I believe have the potential to not only help you, but to push you into a forward progressive motion that will fulfill the purpose and the destiny of God in your life. Just before we get into that, I want to remind you again about something that I'm just overjoyed about, and that is our upcoming conference. I believe God is going to do something absolutely phenomenal right here in Atlanta, Georgia, August 7, 8, and 9. You need to make your plans to be a part of Eagles Gathering 2013. This is going to be a, I mean, just a miraculous supernatural conference. We have special guest speakers that are lined up to be a part of it. We have special music, people in the arts. Uh, the morning sessions are going to be powerful. Everything is set in motion to be a blessing, especially to those that are in the fivefold ministry or in some area of Christian leadership. But the evening services are open to everyone. So we want you to make your plans to come and be with us. You can go to eaglesgathering.net. Find all the information that you need. Be sure to go ahead and register. Be, go ahead and make your reservations to the hotel because they only give us a certain amount of time. The closer it gets to the date, uh, then they start cutting us off and letting us have the rates that they've made available. So please, please, take time to go ahead and register. Go ahead and make your reservations. Go ahead and do the things that are required and essential to come and to be a part. There's no registration. The registration is free, and uh, so we want you to come and be with us here in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, <clears throat> I made a statement recently that I want to reiterate. I hate poverty, and I hate the spirit of poverty because of what it does to people and how it limits them. And I think it's very, very vital that you understand poverty is a spirit. You need to understand that. Poverty is a spirit, and it prevents you from having enough resources to fulfill God instructions and God assignments for your life. So that spirit must be conquered and it must be driven out so that you can move into a place of having all that you need, the abundance that Jesus Christ himself bought and paid for, for our spiritual life, for our physical life, for our emotional life, mental life, family life, financial life, everything. He wants us to have fullness and overflow his abundance. Now. When you go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, the very first part of that particular verse says, And God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was very good. When God created man in the beginning, he placed him in a garden that had everything he needed to live an abundant life. And the Bible said there was gold in that garden, and the gold was good. So when man was born, he was placed in a wealthy environment. He wasn't needy. He wasn't always trying to find a way to make it from day to day. Everything that he needed was within his reach. The same is true for those that believe God and practice his principles. But in order for us to really do that with the full force of our faith, we must despise that spirit of poverty that I have been referring to. Now, why do so many people, and I've seen this, and I've had this question a lot of times in my own life, why are there so many people in church, even in the pulpit, that associate poverty with godliness? I don't understand that. There's people in certain religions that even make vows of poverty. There's other people that look at anyone in church especially those that minister the gospel or that are in the fivefold ministry, if they're blessed, they look at them with a jaundiced eye and they think they must be doing something wrong. They must be doing something manipulative. They must be doing something that is only self-serving. But that's, that, that's spiritual ignorance because the Bible teaches us that those that preach the gospel should live by the gospel. In other words, that we should expect reciprocation, 
The Bible said when you sow spiritual things into the life of people, that those that receive the spiritual impartation should then in turn sow material things back into your life. That's a biblical principle, and that's the way that God set it up so that those that are called into the ministry full-time can do it without always trying to find some source to underwrite and to undergird their ministry because those that they're ministering to are obeying the words of God and they are helping them. And as they are helping them, whatever rewards, blessings, and benefits comes to the life of the servant of God will also come to those that are partnering, assisting, and undergirding that particular minister and ministry. Uh, but, but there's many, many people that have this mindset about poverty. Uh, you know, any kind of crisis that comes causes a person to look for help from somebody that's greater than themselves. And as a result of that, many people that are drenched in poverty exude an aura of godliness because of their consistent petitions to be alleviated out of their poverty. But the truth is that somebody that spends a lot of time asking God in a crisis or to take a crisis away doesn't make the crisis uh, God's perfect will for them or her. It's almost like they idolize their crisis instead of exalting God. And when you do that, you have positioned yourself to permanently remain in that particular predicament or lifestyle. And again, that is not the will of God. You know, a lot of times wealthy people, people that have applied principles of success, and, and some of them, matter of fact, most of them have used biblical principles whether they know it or not. But a lot of times they are portrayed as arrogant and selfish and abusive type people. And uh, there are people that do that. There's people that abuse wealth and they misuse it and use it for evil things. But if wealth was was evil, then anybody that possessed it would be evil. And we know that's not true because we know that there are multitudes of people in the kingdom of God that use their resources to help advance the message of Christ. We know that. If they weren't there, many churches would not exist. Many ministries would be already gone and would have become obscure. But it's because of those that understand why God has blessed them and they use their wealth wisely that the gospel is continuing to encompass the earth. See, God doesn't want you to dwell in poverty. Uh, just as a loving parent in the realm of the natural, a mother, a father, would never wish poverty or any harm on their children, neither does a loving God want you to live in poverty. That's not the heart of God. It's not the will of God. The Bible said in Proverbs 13, 22, that a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. This is the heart of a good man. Well, if that's the heart of a good man, what's the heart of a good God? He wants an inheritance to come to you, to your children, to your children's children, and right on down through your lineage and offspring. See, the Bible tells us that Jesus is the source of riches. Notice this in Deuteronomy 8.18, the New King James Version. It says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the power to get wealth, that He may establish His covenant. So it's Jesus. It's God that comes into our lives, enabling us to get wealth, giving us the power, the ability to get it, so that we, in turn, through his help and his partnership, establish his covenant in all of the earth. God wants you blessed. Settle that in your mind. He wants you to live in victory and in prosperity. He doesn't want you to be bound by the spirit of poverty. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I break the spirit of poverty today. I speak life and wholeness wherever there is lack wherever there is insufficiency, wherever there is not enough. I come against that spirit in the name of Jesus and I release the full force of my faith and believe that today you are bringing them into a new position where they can live in abundance and where that they can demonstrate your goodness in all of the earth. I love you. I thank God for you. Don't forget to go to eaglesgathering.net. Again, that's eaglesgathering.net 
gathering.net. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook. We look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, may God's best be yours.